Hello. Thank you for calling Karen's uh, Says Talk Show. Who's calling? Hello? Who's this calling? Hi, LaVeja. Have you, did you watch the show between 7 and 7.30? Did you like it? Yeah. What'd you like about it? I like the fact that, you know, uh, how people working and working together to discuss one of my favorite things, natural hair. And I love what Kelly said about um, making the decision to go natural, not because it's simple, but because it makes sense. Oh, thank you. Ah, that was me. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> what else did you like? Is there anything else? Um, let's see. Well, do you have a question or comment aside from the lovely comment that you shared with us? Yes, yeah, I still have a question. Okay. Um, Uh, your favorite thing about natural hair? Uh, my, my favorite thing, um, I guess we can all answer this question. My favorite thing about my natural hair is that it is, it's a large, it's a representation. It's like a, an immediate representation of who I am. It, the way I feel about it is that it tells you that I love my, I really, really love my hair because I wear it big, I wear it proud, my hair is kinky. I could care less who, with, with people's opinions who have a, a negative opinion about my hair. Um, I, to me, it's easy to maintain, and I think it's beautiful. Well, hello, Imani Dawson from the Beauty Bubble here. And I have to say that I love wearing natural hair because it makes me feel like my most authentic self. Like I, over the years, I've worn my hair in lots of different ways. I've straightened it. And I just don't feel like me when my hair is straight. Like I feel like when it's wild and curly and undefined and a little crazy or in my power puff, like I feel... Like I could take on the world. Like I feel like they're getting the most unique and, and original version of Imani that there is. And so I just can't even imagine myself with anybody else's standard of beauty because my natural hair has helped me embrace my own, embrace myself as my standard of beauty. Well, I'm not too angry, but I definitely agree with you, Imani. Um, I can't imagine my life without my natural hair as it is, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, cool. Hi, this is Natasha. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm good, thanks for calling. We're so excited to have you on the show. So are we all going around answering what we love about our natural hair? I think so. Okay, so it's my turn. All right. So I love my natural hair. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been natural for a long time now, so it's pretty normal to me. Um, I haven't really thought about that question in a long time, but I mean, I guess to piggyback off what the lady said here, it's, it's me. It's who I am. Um, I think it reflects my personality. Um, I have a, I have a, a couple of types of personalities. <laughs> um, sometimes I am a little all over the place. Um, <laughs> sometimes I'm, you know, I'm free most of the time. Um, but yeah, I, I think it does reflect, um, you know, who I am. And it's also a, um, how want I say? That's a, I mean, it's, that's a really good question because it's kind of hard to it's hard describe. to fit it all yes, in. Yes, it's, it's hard to describe something that's such a part of yourself that you're just so used yeah. to. You know what I mean? But this is who I am. I, I cannot imagine myself any other way. Um, and I just want people to feel as free as I do. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Hi, LaVeja. This is Larie. How are you? Hi, I'm great. 
I'm just going to echo um, everything. Oh, go ahead, baby. Go ahead. Oh, no, fine. I was just going to say I echo everything that the other ladies said. Um, but I think I would also add to that that one of the things I really have appreciated about my natural hair journey is the community of sisterhood that it's sort of given me entree to. And uh -huh. not that I wasn't able to have sister friends before I was natural. You know, I had a beautiful circle of sister friends in my perm life and my Jericho life. Uh, <laughs> and I carry those friendships even with me to this day. But I think something about seeing other women who have chosen chosen to really determine and consistently see ourselves as beautiful using our own standard of beauty. For me, that's just empowering because that's something that Black women haven't traditionally been able to do. So I just love that it sort of gives me this access to other women who, you know, despite the fact that we're all at different places on our journey, have the ability to sort of say, hey, like, I'm going to be beautiful on my own terms and I'm going to step out and show myself on my own terms. And then, you know, I think that's just an amazing thing, especially because that's not something we often have. So I'm, I'm going to add that to everything that everybody else said. Thanks for watching. Thank you. I definitely um, agree with your thing. It feels like, it seems like natural hair is a confluence that has, you know, united all of us together. And I think you guys said what most natural women um, don't explicitly say, but I think it's something internal. Or we all probably wouldn't be natural if we didn't feel the same way that you mm. guys feel about our natural hair. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a good time to be a black woman and to have this kind of hair. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree, ladies? Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 Probably yes. better than ever before. Holly yeah. Well, post slavery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't believe Thank you can you actually laugh yeah, about a slavery yeah, reference. Yeah. Great point. So we have a question on Twitter. Yay. Oh, excellent. And the person wants to know, how is this platform going to possibly change people's perception of black women mm. with natural hair? Will it make a, a change? Will it encourage other people to be natural? Wow, that's a tall that's, order. That I think having positive images of the kind of smart, beautiful black women that I know have natural hair definitely helps. I think every little bit helps. And it's our hope that by watching Karen Says Talk Show and the Beauty Bubble that will spark conversations amongst women around the country and around the world when it, with respect to hair and lifestyle and beauty topics. But even if no one ever watches it, we are an example of Black women who are smart, beautiful, confident, and who happen to have natural hair. And so if we're not getting that from Hollywood, we now know that we are empowered in our own images. And for me, that's the ultimate thing. I'm going to add to that, because I think that was an excellent like statement. And I think that it's also important, because one of the things we were talking about during this, this uh, portion of our discussion, we were mentioning cutting in the ATL and how we have these representations of women. And typically, you know, reality TV doesn't show women of color in positive light. And I think the fact that we are sitting on the couch having a conversation where right. we all have four different opinions, four different curl patterns, four <laughs> different ways of seeing the world, but are able to do so in a way that shows respect and, and a mutual understanding for the respect that we have for each other as other women. I don't think you see that. I think just being able to show that to the young women in my life, I think it's huge being able to say that there's this platform where we can have diverse opinions and we can approach the world differently and respect each other and not have to bring it out, you know, throw it out on the floor. I guess I will jump up from the couch and right. jump you now. How about we do our, you know, required fights for the reality show, you know, yeah. so not having to do that. I think we have at least before. 10 minutes before we You're right. destroy each other. The night is still young. Hair could be tossed. We don't know. <laughs> and someone else wants to know how we met. Oh, How wow. do we meet? Oh my gosh. Oh. Do I go first? Um, I guess we have the oldest. You guys have seniority. <laughs> so, <laughs> Karen and I actually attended a school called Spence on the Upper East Side. So, shout out to Carrie Washington and Gwyneth Paltrow and all the other amazing women who graduated. And at the time, I was the only black girl from Brooklyn in my grade, and I was miserable because I had no one to ride the train with. And then suddenly came, in the, when we were in the eighth grade, this badass girl came in. You could tell she took care of herself. She had her own opinions. Everybody was like, who's that? And that happened to be Karen. And so <laughs> she, luckily for me, was also from Brooklyn. And we had an opportunity to bond, um, even though I was a little square compared to Karen back then. And we have been friends for a really, really, really long time. As a matter of fact, she's really more like my sister. Yeah. And so I couldn't have 
even undertaken this journey without her. She yeah. actually cut the relaxer out of my hair when wow. we were in high school mm. because I didn't trust anybody else to do it. Oh, so, that's slow. Yeah. And I don't even remember. I know. <laughs> I do. It's been so long. Yes. Right. Okay. Wow. Thank you. That was very sweet. That is. All right. Sweet. Who's up next? Laurie. We mm -hmm. met when our children were enrolled in Little Sun People. That's right. Shout out to Shout out to Little Sun People. Mm -hmm. And. We, our children were four at the same time. They were four at the same time, and then they went to kindergarten together. Right, right, right. And we just sort of developed a friendship. Shout out to Mommies and Mojitos, Little Sun People is right. a black-owned educational institution. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. Um, if you want to raise brilliant black children, it's a great place to send your kids. Yeah, we did that there, and then professional prep after that, mm -hmm. and been friends ever since. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess it's my turn, huh? Yeah. I met Karen and Imani on the same day. I think, right? Or did I have met you before? I don't before? remember. <laughs> What's going on? I know. Where did we, where did I that was weird. You're talking about at the, at the um, pool, pool party. party in 2011. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a pool party in the city, and I saw Karen and her magnificent fro, and I just had to stop her and talk to her. And I was like, I love you. Um, <laughs> and I think I want to do a story on you for Main Moves TV. And I was talking to you, and Imani was there. And Imani was like, I have chat for her and everything. So that's how we met. And then I interviewed both of you on the street, actually. That's how I learned that one should never appear on camera without being fully made up. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's I have learned it well. You were fun. It was very fun, and I remember yeah. seeing you and being really impressed by the fact that you had this camera and you had like an assistant with you helping yeah. you out. I was like, oh no, she's the real deal. <laughs> like, she, I, my background was in production, so yeah. I had immediate respect for what you were trying to do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that inspired me actually to. Oh. Yeah, so I, I didn't really have tribal culture referral yet, you but didn't. no, it was going to that event, okay. seeing like amazing dynamic women there, and realizing that it was possible to create media in this space, mm. and then take my talents, and I was like, Natasha's doing it, I can do it too. Yeah. We'll see, it's it. inspired you inspire me, <laughs> and your hair looks wonderful. I remember when I met you now, you were on a panel at mm -hmm. this, yeah, at this event in the city, I can't remember. It was a natural hair panel, I believe. Okay. And I was like, this woman right here. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I she know. Was speaking the truth. Yeah. Yeah, that was so impressed. We need like, to call her the preacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And then your husband stood up and he was like, You guys don't understand. Like the girl the young girls, they worship her, they love oh, her. Oh, he is a great yeah. person to have. If you need a fan in your audience, yeah. my husband is like, <laughs> That's true. Yes, he's a good fan. He's yeah, good. so I remember that. That mm -hmm. was the honeybee natural. Yes, honeybee yes, natural. Honey Bee natural. I can't remember. Yes, honeybee yeah. natural. That's where I met Sabine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. That was a great night. Yeah. That was I great. love natural hair events. Me too. They are so I really do. Absolutely. Yeah. I met so many wonderful people at natural hair events. I hope you guys go to natural hair events. You should. If you have yeah. natural hair events in your in your town, and actually we have to give a shout out to Adia Rogers who had International Natural Hair Meetup yeah, Day that just happened uh, on Saturday, mm -hmm. and you were at an event. I was. Yeah. I was at the, the Philly International Natural Hair Meetup. And how was it? it was it was dope. It was yeah. and, and a bunch of the women I'd seen them the previous week at an event in Jersey. Mm -hmm. And a pre the previous previous week at another event in Philly, so it's like all oh, friends. So it's, it's nice. I, I, I like. There's nothing like the fellowship of being at an event and right. being around women who share your values and who can affirm the choice that you made, which is still courageous. We have a caller. We have another caller. Shout out to the callers. Shout out to the callers. Hello, caller. Who's calling and where are you calling from? Hi, how are you? Uh, my name's Ronnie. I'm calling from Jersey. Hi, hey, how are, are you? Hi, Karen. Hi, ladies. How are you? We're good. We're, good. We're excited. Did you yeah. Did you look at the show? I did. I did, and I wanted to uh, I wanted to call in on um, a question that actually came up with me and a few of my friends the other night. Okay. Um. So as far as talking about hair in the workplace, um, do you personally feel? Do any of you ladies personally feel that um, black women who, who choose to not wear their hair in a natural state at work because they think it will be unaccepted. Do you feel like they are further reinforcing the idea that natural black hair is unprofessional? Um, I don't see it. That's a, that's a hard question because everyone's situation is different. And my opinion is that you need to do what you need to do to keep your job. We don't need to take the man to natural hair church. 
You need to get your paycheck. You need to keep it moving. Be natural when you walk out the door. Throw that wig off when you walk out the building. So I, you know, if that's what you need to do, it's all about, you know, maintaining your life and maintaining your paycheck. And and, and there's a time and a place. And work is not always the time and the place to tell people about how natural hair is fabulous and magnificent and how you want to rock it and have fun with it. You know, I knew what you're saying, but I also feel like there are creative ways to incorporate natural hair um, into your professional appearance. Like if people don't stand up and do it, then it'll be harder and harder for it to change. I mean, 20 years ago, if you told me that there was going to be a natural hair revolution afoot, even though I was already natural, I would have, I'd have been like, no, I don't believe it at all. And part of the reason why natural hair is so ubiquitous in some circles is because there were women that there was an increasing chorus of women who decided that they wanted to adopt natural hair and sort of play around with the paradigm for beauty when it when it came to them. So I think you kind of have to make those same sacrifices at work and sort of see what you can get away with, like assess the situation. Perhaps you can do a bait and switch where you wear it flat ironed or under a wig, you know, up through the probatory period. And then once you know that that job is guaranteed, you can see how far you can go, what's acceptable in terms of the sort of professional code at your job. I know that what I used to do was I'd wear my hair pulled back in a bun, or a, one time I, I straightened it with disastrous results. So I mostly was like, how like tight can I slick my hair back to look like <laughs> it's not a threat to anybody? And then I would, once I had secured a job, then I would sort of play around with different styles. Ultimately, I found myself working in a creative field where it's sort of expected that you do something really cool and quirky with your hair because that's part of your creative identity. So I would I would say that to Karen's point, it does definitely depend on the environment, but definitely play around with those boundaries, like mm -hmm. test them a little bit. Don't just say, OK, well, nobody else has natural hair here, so I guess I'll just have to wear my wig forever. I think that. Yeah, yeah, I thought because I mean, a few years ago, I worked in corporate and I did wear my hair naturally. I have a very kinky, very coily hair. I mean, I would even wear it sometimes in like coiled or two short foot. And I actually received a lot of compliments, more so from white women and white men. And I don't know if it was just a safe face, but you know, I have other black girlfriends at work who would straighten their hair. And the same fear, the same idea that it's unprofessional or, you know, I can't wear my hair like that, still existed in their mind while they're staring right at me, you know? And it's, when in the same position, or if not, I'm in a better position. So it's, it's just sometimes I feel like it's that fear of the unknown itself, you know what I mean? And I think that in certain places, I'm definitely not naive to corporations and the businesses that, you know, absolutely deem it as unprofessional. But I think sometimes, like you said, like if, if we don't have those boundaries, if there's a majority of a group that will not just straighten their hair just because of the fear, but sometimes they, that gives them more of a reason to say, okay, it is unprofessional, you know what I mean? Right. I think you raise a lot of good points. Hi, this is Lurie from Afro State of Mind. Thank you for having me. I think you made a lot of great points, and I think that really outlines some of the concerns that we were referencing in the prior segment. In that, you know, for a lot of us, we get more concern, quote unquote, about our hair from other women who look like us than we do from a lot of our white counterparts. But one thing you said, I think, is really important. A lot of us do still carry that fear with us and for good reason i mean we've seen seen or heard or have read about people who have been reprimanded or have not gotten the advances that they like because of their hair you know little girls getting kicked out of school so i think there's it's rational to have that concern and to have that fear so i think that for those of us who are sort of at the point where we're saying we're going to be kind of on the avant-garde and decide that we're going to cross over that line or we're going to be sort of the the standard barriers i think that we need to one be aware that we can't we can't evaluate anyone else's natural hair journey. Wherever you're at, that's just where you are. And if you're still dealing with that fear factor, recognize that. And we kind of need to challenge ourselves that in our private time, that we're not also still giving into those beauty standards. You're at a point where you really can't wear your hair natural at work for whatever reason. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's a real, a fear, a real based fear. When you're at home in your private time, try to embrace your natural hair beauty as much as you can. You know, if you have to wear a wig at work, try not wearing it at home. Try getting comfortable on the weekends when you're in a comfortable space around people who support you so that you can at least to yourself be promoting the idea that you are working towards becoming overcoming that fear because fear is really a projection of where we are more so than when a lot of our white colleagues are at. And you know, yeah. we we have to be, I think, 
doctor and patient at the same time because there was a point when there was no way in the world I was going to walk out of my house with my hair and a big afro and you know now one of the things that people kind of know me for is a big afro so and that's an evolution and we just have to allow our sisters the space to do that now conversely mm -hmm. when I wasn't aware you know strong enough to wear my hair I also made sure that I wasn't belittling other women who were doing so right sometimes when we're not quite where some other person is at we sometimes say oh well you can't be successful if you do that or you can't look like this and do that and that really is kind of you know some internal issues you may have to work out so definitely if you're not at a point where you can wear your natural hair yet support other sisters who do make sure that in conversation with other colleagues you're saying hey did you happen to see Natasha's hair oh my god I love it because that's just gonna help broaden out the space of acceptable hairstyles for other women in the workplace mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. okay well thank you ladies I just wanted to touch on that I have we actually have this conversation in the end of my time so I just want to hear other people's thoughts on it oh well thank you so much for calling in it and I would remember too if Ursula Burns could be CEO of Xerox Top Corporation with a TWA then you could probably rock your natural hair in a corporate environment. I definitely hold her up as a standard. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, ladies, so much. I'm really looking forward to uh, other shows as well. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Okay. So someone wants to know, what do you do in their professions, careers, or businesses in relation to natural hair? That is on Twitter. So the person wants to know, what do we what do? We do? Mm -hmm. And how does that relate? Oh, what do we do? What do we oh, do? What okay. are, yeah. Personally, what do we do? How does that relate oh, to natural hair? Oh. Go. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am an attorney, and I am the director and co-founder of Breaking the Cycle Consulting, which is an educational consulting firm that empowers educators and administrators and families to marry the research on positive racial identity and academic success. So in shorthand, we teach teachers how to teach black and brown kids, and we teach parents how to incorporate academic principles into the home so that we can help our children do better. Um, so in relation to natural hair, um, what does that do, natural hair? It's, yeah. <laughs> so Afro State of Mind Media is a media pro um, project that I'm working on. It's um, at my blog, afrostateofmind.com, um, where I deal with hair and race as, it, or really hair and skin color as race, as metaphors for broader issues concerning race and identity. Um, and so I wrote a book called Afro State of Mind, Memories of a Nappy-Headed Black Girl. Um, so really hair is kind of my linchpin. That's sort of what I use to explain a lot of the racial issues and help people sort of grapple with how to address that in an academic space. Okay. Okay. Well, I am a television producer. Um, I work at a uh, local television station in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I'm also the founder of Maine Moves TV, so that's how it's in relation to natural hair. Maine Moves TV is a, um, a website where I produce natural hair videos, so tutorials for companies, um, tutorials for you know um, natural hairstylists to, I guess, teach women how to style their natural hair, what products to use. Um, yeah, and also the founder of Naturals for Change, which is a social justice movement. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, our um, so what we do is we try to mobilize the natural hair community to advocate for um, social issues affecting Black people in this country and around the world. We have another call coming oh, wow. in. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. What's your name and where are you calling Hi. from? Hi, Kiana, calling from Brooklyn. How are you? Good. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> did you take a look at the show? I did, and I'm so excited about this show. This is this is something that we've needed so for so long, and finally it's here. So thank you guys so much. I just love your show. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. thank you for watching and supporting. We appreciate it. Thank you for calling. Do you have a question or a comment oh. for us? I do, I do. I, I've been uh, natural for a while now, and um, I just want to know what you guys' thoughts are. I mean, I know what my thoughts are about this, but I think it's good to get it out into the natural world, into the public. Um, but what are your thoughts about how black men perceive black women's hair mm -hmm. in the natural state, mm -hmm. and they, they kind of look down upon it? So Damn. what are your thoughts about that? She's I mean, going I all, that all the way of, there. You're going all the way I know, there. I know. <laughs> Okay, so you want to know? I'm sorry. Oh, no, you go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. You're, 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 you're the boss of the situation. Go ahead. You got the floor. <laughs> the reason why, the, we, the reason why I say that is because it's something that you know, as black women, you try to embrace it, and so you want to see the same thing from our men. 
but it's just like this, you know, it's either you don't have the straight and long hair like everybody else, the weeds and whatnot, the braids, you know, just I just want to hear your thoughts on it. Like, so is your question our thoughts on, like, what exactly is your question? Our thoughts on how to get a man that loves natural hair, or is it how to talk to your man about accepting your natural hair, or, like, what exactly? Because I'm... No, I'm like, I, I probably didn't clarify. So it's kind of like how we, like, as black women have weird issues like a hair movement, mm -hmm. but black men, mm -hmm. it's being a black hair movement for men as well. That's good. Okay. Okay. In terms of accepting their hair or accepting women with Afro texture hair? Well, them accepting their hair and, mm -hmm. and, and just, just from a culturally perspective, from a cultural mm -hmm. perspective. That's I had a conversation with a gentleman a few months ago, and he was, you know how guys when they brush their hair, they just walk around with a brush and mm -hmm. they look ridiculous, because I'm just like, really? <laughs> um, do or do rag. Or do rag, right. right. And, and they talk about the waist he's spinning. Yeah, yeah. So I was I was likening that obsession with waves yeah. to women's obsession with natural um, straight hair yeah. and straight hairstyles, and I'm like I was saying that it's pretty much the same thing because you're trying to alter your your yeah. texture right. mm -hmm. and to make it look less African, less or a different complex, a different um, uh, texture. Yeah. And he was arguing me down, and I you know I what already knew. His, what, what could be his argument? There could be no argument. Yeah. You're just not accepting <laughs> that you're standing there doing this. Yeah. That you're trying to get rid of the Afro kink that naturally appears in your mm. hair. Um, so that was an it was a short conversation because I'm not trying to beat anybody over the head. Right. I state my opinion, you state your opinion. We can agree to disagree, and I move on with my life, and you move on with yours. It's fine. <laughs> Um, so it wasn't much of a conversation because I wasn't trying to convince him of every, anything that he wasn't going to at least be open to thinking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a very zen way to approach the natural hair conversation with respect to men. This is a, that's a, I think it's a great question. These are just the kinds of water cooler topics that we curate on Tribe Called Curl, which I am the founder and president of, it's a digital lifestyle network. I didn't have a chance to introduce because I'm trying to do everything at once. Well done, um, well done. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, I thought about it. Um, I think with respect to men and natural hair, it's important to remember that they are subject to the same cultural conditioning that we are. They, they get barraged with images of white beauty being the perceived ideal and you know it's a little more complicated because they're not looking at it like oh I wish I were a white man per se because white men are more attractive because um, then there's this whole like myth of hyper masculinity and sexual virility around black men and black manhood so they are in a slightly different position but I do feel like they're you know they're seeing that long and straight and curly hair is more, they're getting the message that that's more feminine than the natural kinks and coils that we see in our community. So I think I am seeing more men come out and embrace their textured hair. It's nowhere near on the level of women who've embraced natural hair. I see mm -hmm. men coming out saying that they are in support of the natural hair movement. I'm also on the East Coast. Um, so I think that might be a little biased, but I feel like um, things tend to be a little more progressive on the coast in, you know, cities that are more liberal rather than being in the heartland or deep in Texas. So I've never had a guy tell me, you know, he thought natural hair was ugly, but I certainly have seen videos from guys like, oh my God, you did a big chop. Like, what's wrong with you? Now you're bald headed and you look like me. Like, I definitely have heard those snickering Hold comments. On one second, okay. So I feel like just in general, men are a bit behind us in terms of textured hair acceptance. We have the two calls. <laughs> <laughs> Technology. Hello. I think I took too long to answer. Oh, yeah, sorry. I didn't see that it was Call ringing. back, call in. Yes, yes. We're all back. <laughs> Imani, I think you raised a really great point, though. Like, mm -hmm. black men fail the doll test. Just, black yeah. boys mm -hmm. fail the doll test, just like black girls do. And yeah. I think that if we don't take into account the fact that they're taught from a young age that you want certain trappings of manhood that looks like whatever it may look like. Maybe it's the car you drive or the woman you have on your arm. And if it's the woman you have on your arm, we are taught that the best version of womanhood is the white woman 
who has all of these, you know, characteristics. And one thing my husband says is before he came into his own space where he was dating black women and because he was very much the, you know, not as embracing of black beauty oh, before he went through his oh, own transformation was that okay. if he has been taught that a white woman is the thing to have and all he sees are black women who are trying to get what white women have, i.e. straight hair, why would he go right. for the copy yeah. instead of the original, wow, right? So really when you bizarre. are a black person, male or female, you have not unlearned standards of beauty that were taught to us vis-a-vis -vis slavery, white supremacy, you are going to look for the top thing, and the top thing in the society doesn't look like anybody on these couches, right? So okay. we have to teach young boys, just like we have young spaces for young girls. I see the mommy and me, love my hair, you know, natural yeah. hair community is very feminine oriented, but when yeah. I had my son at, you know, six years old, he was able to tell me, mommy, um, one, how come none of the princesses look like you? And two, I think my friend so-and-so gets has more friends because his hair is straight. Wow. I'm like, you're a boy. I didn't even know we were going to have this conversation. Like, I wasn't prepared for you to have to have those types of feelings. But he notices hair textures. He has a very, he's got like a kinky texture hair. Mm -hmm. And he noticed that there are some lighter skinned kids in his class who have different texture hair, boys who he felt was getting more treatment and he mm -hmm. attributed to their hair. So we have to raise them. They need to, there need to be some men conversations, brothers. Y'all need to talk. You know what's interesting? Because hey, I can, think, I, can I just get to oh, this, this sure. one? Right this call it. Hello? Yes, hello. Oh, we have a man on the line. Oh, oh so we men. Yes, we <laughs> like men. Hey, sir. <laughs> <laughs> my husband. Hi, who's this? Yes, this is Brother Quasi. How are you? Hi, Brother Quasi. Hey, so How are you doing? Where are you calling from? I'm Brooklyn. Well, of course. BK. Of course. <laughs> Thank you for uh, calling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having this show. Uh, so my question for you ladies is, uh, what uh, what would you say to a young female who wants to go natural but um, have the intention of managing natural hair as opposed to just, you know, having a relaxer and just wearing it like that instead of, you know, managing it and so on and so forth? Um, I would say because I, I do attend a lot of natural hair events, I think one place that she could start to get more information and to meet more people is by starting to go to natural hair events because there's dozens and hundreds and sometimes thousands and thousands of women <laughs> people around whose the conversation is centered around natural hair and anyone in the room will be happy to share their experience and happy to share how fabulous their experience is and um, how easy it is to do their hair and the different styles like there's so many different things that can be discussed in a room full of strange women who are going to embrace <laughs> And you know, and her choice to get more information. So I think you should um, share with her that she should think about going to natural hair events. Okay. Well, I have a question for you. I mean, is she open to going natural? What? what where is her? Yeah. Oh, she is. Okay, because that, that's yeah. the. I think that you know, a lot of people, especially when you first go natural, you want everybody around you to go natural, and um, you know, you're so excited, and you know, talking about products and stuff, and you know, some people who are not there may feel like you're bombarding them with all this stuff and you're pushing them to do something they're not ready to do. So they have to be in a space where they're ready. So she's ready, yeah. I think natural hair events is a good thing. Um, natural hair websites, there's a bunch of websites. We have a bunch of websites here on, on this panel that they can um, that they can go on. Um, YouTube, we're on YouTube right now. There's a bunch of um, tutorials and people talking about natural hair. So the conversation is, is happening. So she just needs to tap into it and um, she'll find someone that she me in the call. Yeah. She'll find someone that she can um, relate to. And um, Quasi, can you hold on one second? <laughs> Hello? Can you hold one second? Hello? I love this. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so if you share with her that she should think about visiting uh, websites or looking into bloggers, you know, YouTube videos, Tell her to try to follow bloggers that look like her. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is so yes. important. Yeah. She should find she should find images of people that look like her because it can be confusing <clears throat> and frustrating and just hurt one's self-esteem when you see a certain texture and it's bouncing around and flowing around or doing whatever or doing nothing that your hair does. And that just creates a whole next set of issues, psychological issues and you know, so on and so forth. So she should really think about, you know, following people whose hair texture is looks like hers. Yeah. Oh, I totally agree. 
I hey, this is Imani from uh, Tribe Called Pearl Media, and so one of the things that I would suggest that she do is just sort of get acclimated to the general space. I think events are great. I mean, we have Tribe Called Pearl hosts a monthly mixer uh, called Kinks and Drinks if she's in the New York City area, and we love to have women come out. We fellowship around here. We do education. Um, but there are lots of resources available. There are YouTube videos. There are the websites. There are um, there have been conversations being had on Twitter and Instagram. So I think that the first thing she needs to do is just start researching if she's unwilling to make the leap, um, so that she can see that there are millions of women who've done it somebody's got to have a similar texture and have something that she would consider aspirational. And I, I feel like it is important to find role models that look like you, although hair can be very deceptive because it can look similar and its characteristics can be very different. So there are just basic natural hair principles that everyone needs to know, like basic, you know, how to create a basic hair regimen, you know, general, um, rules for dealing with natural hair. And that's one of the things that we try to provide on tribecorecurl.com. And also on our YouTube channel, we do tutorials around styling and maintenance. And our YouTube channel is Tribe Cold Curl. So I, I would, you know, definitely recommend that she look us up as well. I think if nothing else, it's important for her to really think about how she thinks about her hair and how she thinks about what looks beautiful to her. And it's important for all black women, regardless of how you wear your hair, to know that for hundreds of thousands of years, we thought that there was nothing wrong with our hair. And for hundreds of thousands of years, we thought that our hair was beautiful and our skin color was beautiful and our hair textures were beautiful and we celebrated them. And it's only a very brief period in time where we felt like managing our hair was so problematic that it required us to do something completely out of the box, right? So I think it's just important that regardless of how she wears her hair, if she never chooses to wear her hair naturally, because we're not the natural hair police, um, but it's just important for her to know that no matter how she chooses to wear her hair, for the vast majority of time that people of African descent have looked like us, we had no problems rocking our hair and making it work and managing it and finding it beautiful. So as she's learning all of these things, then you know she needs to incorporate that mindset challenge as well. Thank you, lovely queens, for answering the question. Black power, black love. Thank you. Black power, black love. Thank you, Crazy. Okay, well it is it is the end of the, oh, the road for us. Yes, we have oh. gone over a few minutes and yeah. we. Missed a few calls, but we are very appreciative. Yeah. Thank you to everyone thank, thank who watched the show and thank tuned you. in to Afterglow, our post show. And it only gets better from here, right? Yes. 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 Oh, so let's tell everybody about the hashtag. Just if they say hashtag. Oh, oh. Time for one last caller? Um, <laughs> sure. It's the first day. Hey, what the hell? It's what you can do when you own your own media space. I know, right? <laughs> Hello, last and final caller. Who's calling? Yes, we can hear you. Who's calling? This is Monica. My name is Monica. I'm calling from Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, Missouri. Wow. wow. Hey, Monica. Thank Missouri. you, Monica. Did you get to watch the show? I am watching the show. You guys are busy. I've been calling all night. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. Thank you for continuing to call. Do you have a comment or a question my for us? Question. Yes. My question is, how many of you have daughters and... Mm -hmm. Do you find, do you have any tips actually for making it easier for people with one daughter to manage their own hair care as well as their daughter's hair and keep everybody's hair healthy? Mm. I, what I do with my daughter, I have a seven-year-old little girl, is oh, she's over there. Mm -hmm. and, and so I affirm her, the beauty of her hair all the time. I'll touch her hair, I'll play with her hair and tell her how beautiful it is. I'll, I'll mention the, the beautiful qualities of her hair, her kinks. And her coils and tell her her hair is so soft and so beautiful when she gets her hair done i again affirm um, how beautiful her hairstyles look and her braids um, and so i think the psychological is very important because once you have your daughter uh, psychologically um, accepting of her hair you can kind of block out some of the external um, messages that she's getting that they're getting so she watches, you know, television shows. She sees 
um, white children flipping their hair around and doing different things that we don't do with our hair because our hair doesn't do that. And so I don't want my daughter to look at that and, and, and want that and lust after that. And so I always let her know how beautiful her hair is. Um, so to me, vis um, verbally uh, affirming that with her is very important. Mm -hmm. And then I also, because I have a product line, Karen's Body Beautiful, as you may know, um, because I have a product line, I show her how to use the products in her hair to make it easy for her to groom her hair so that she never gets frustrated and thinks that her hair is a problem or, or anything like that. So those are just two of the things that I do with my daughter. And uh, in terms of um, playing with dolls, I only buy my dolls, my daughter dolls that look like her, A, in terms of complexion and the hair texture as close as possible. Um, and that's all That's all we have in our house. So that's how I kind of keep that message going. Yeah. So I actually have a son and um, not a daughter, but to Larie's point earlier, natural hair issues occur with boys as well. So mm -hmm. I'm starting at his age just to tell him how lovely I think his particular brand of curls and coils are. You know, we let him wear a big fluffy afro. We kind of, you know, coo over how cute he is. He's still about two and a half. And we try to involve him in the hair care process, which with a toddler can be challenging. Mm -hmm. So I would say just from a practical point of view, I would definitely allow your daughter to have ownership over some piece of her hair regimen, even if it's, you know, she's really small and maybe she's maintaining the comb and the brush and, you know, she's washing it out in preparation for your weekly or bi-weekly hair ritual. I think one of the most amazing memories that I have as a, a child was the fact that getting my hair done was this bonding opportunity with my grandmother. We would go to the salon together and get laid. <laughs> and so I feel like, you know, today I would never, ever um, want to relax a child's hair as early as I got my hair relaxed. But I certainly feel like the closeness that comes with sharing like hair rituals with your, your mother, your grandmother, you know, the other women in your family is something that every mom can replicate. Like maybe you guys share the experience because you watch something together on TV, you know, or you talk about what's going on at school or work. So it's not just, oh my God, my mom's going to pull my hair out from the root. It's this is my time to bond with my mom. I think when you approach it like that, it becomes more fun and it takes on a greater meaning than just it's time to get your hair done. Well, do you do your routines on different nights, though? Like, do you, because I just find I'm so exhausted yeah. having to do all my hair care routine and her hair care routine. No, that, that definitely is. I think I think you need a separate day for, you know, mommy and me. And I think mommy then needs her own time. And you know what? Don't be afraid to find a qualified natural hair care uh, professional for you or your daughter. Like, sometimes you just need to sub in. Like, I know when it comes to my son and, and if I ever have a daughter, like, there are certain styles that I have down pat. You know, if you want, like, a basic, well-maintained look, I got you. But if it's something, like, really sort of elevated or sophisticated, then we need to bring in an expert. And every, you know, every culture and community has its experts. Like if you're going to a fancy event, you're probably going to want to have a professional makeup artist. Why not use a professional stylist? You know, maybe you guys are going to a wedding or, you know, it's a graduation or something special. Or maybe you just need a break and you need somebody that's going to cater to you in the same way that you cater to your daughter. So I would definitely, one, have my own designated days for my hair, but I would also not be afraid to enlist the help of a professional because you know what, mommy needs special time too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say I would say that, uh, I mean, I don't have a daughter yet, but um, I have nieces. <laughs> and one important thing that I wanna stress is um, being a role model for your, for your child. Um, I don't know, I mean, I'm not a mom, but I, I really feel like I, I see little kids and they look up to their moms as examples of Absolutely. what they want to be like. So I think that um, just keeping that in mind and, and um, also being conscious of how you speak about your own hair, um, how, you, how you even take care of yourself, always pass, passes down to your daughter. So I would just say keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
And I think that you'd also have to set realistic expectations. Like my son, for the longest time, I said, we're not cutting his hair. I want him to have long, light of even hair. <laughs> my husband had locks, and he had locks, and I'm like, you know, I want my big hair. Yeah. And it was great until, like, I realized he was tender-headed. And I wasn't allowed to be tender-headed. I was the firstborn in my house, so my, I wasn't allowed to be tender-headed. That was a privilege that my parents did not extend them until my siblings came along. So when he turned it up tender-headed, I was kind of confused. Like, I don't know what to do. Why are you crying? Like, grit your teeth and sit still, kind of like I was told. And so I had to sort of take a step back and realize, you know what? I want this line of Judah flowing made up hair. It's not practical for you in this particular age because it's requiring me to engage in hair practices that you find traumatic. I'm irritated <clears throat> by the time we're done. I have to wait till you're asleep. And then if I move too hard, I'm worried about, you know, so it was just, it was too much. So we ended up, we did cut his hair. He now has a flat top and he, you know, flips up with a mohawk, but we had to be realistic about what was going to make sense for him. Then my daughter came along, she's two. And I have the type of hair, you can braid it once, braid it on Monday, it's gonna be in those same braids, fuzzier, but it will be in those same braids two weeks from that Monday, right? It's not gonna move. My daughter has comb everyday kind of hair. I don't know where that came from. I, as a black mother who embraced natural hair, that's not at all what I was expecting. I thought she was gonna have my comb every two weeks. So the idea that I was gonna have to comb her hair on a regular basis, and now it's, you know, her texture is getting a little more kinky. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. I need these naps to come in. I need the kinks to be there. Uh, but you know, I had to alter my entire, my morning schedule had to shift because I couldn't do her hair at night and then have it still look like somebody had done something to it the next day. So I had to really set different expectations for myself. I had to learn how to do her texture hair because that wasn't the texture I was most familiar with. So I think the educational process is really important. Um, you know, I have her experiment on, but we just got her her first doll. We didn't do dolls for a long time. That's a whole other show. Um, we just got her first doll and you can YouTube and Google how to make the doll's hair kinkier. You can make your hair kinky, uh, kinkier texture so that when you're doing your child's hair, your child can be doing that doll's hair and sort of transferring that experience with them. But I mean, I think the ideas that Imani suggested doing it on separate days is very, very important. And just being really realistic about what our hair looks like and what it can do and working with it within those parameters is really important. Okay, I think we have another call. We oh, wow. We do, we do. Actually, over here. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Good luck. Right. Please keep us posted on how it goes, Monica. She's She's <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> I had to call them back. <laughs> you hang up on the phone. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Who's this? And where are you calling from? Hi. This is Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Where are you calling from? Is she breaking up? Hello. Yeah. Hi. Where are you calling from? I'm from Brooklyn. Hi, how are you? Hey, Brooklyn. <laughs> Do you have a question or a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to know what is the best hair care management, um, hair care management to grow your hair, to simply grow your hair, to make it fuller, to make it um, like it has life. Mm, okay. So she's asking for, wait, wait, So you want to know how to get thicker, fuller hair, healthier, healthier yes. hair. Yes. Gotcha. Um, so thicker hair. Mm. Um, so that's, there's a couple of different answers to that question. So thicker hair, there, there are a lot of products that market themselves as being, you put this in your hair, it will get thicker. That's not true. <laughs> so don't even buy those products. You'll be wasting your money. Um, in terms of thicker, there's ways you can style your hair to make it thicker. I'm not a stylist, so I can't recommend specific, and I don't style my own hair. This is, this is it. <laughs> um, so there are ways you could style your hair to make it thicker until you can, you know, consult with a, a natural hair hair care stylist or look at YouTube videos to find those styles and find a style that's realistic for you, something that either takes as much time as you're willing to spend in your own hair. Well, um, what about, so, I mean, what I want to say is that longer, that we can get to, to, you know, growth, hair growth. Hair growth. Healthy hair growth. Mm. Healthy hair growth. Okay, so first I would start with products because I manufacture my own line of products. Um, so there are many, many, many products on the market that say that it'll make your hair grow. That is not true. There's no product that you just put it in your hair and make your hair grow. Because if that were true, there'd be a lot of people walking around with hair down to their ankles <laughs> because everybody would, everybody would figure out what that product is and everybody would be buying it. So these are all just marketing ploys for companies to sell products and make money. So your hair grows based on your diet and the health that you're in your health. Um, there are things that you can do, um, like take supplements like biotin, 
which will strengthen your hair and your nails. Biotin doesn't make your hair grow. It makes your hair and nails stronger so it doesn't break as much. So you okay. so you'll you'll have less breakage and so you'll be you'll have to you'll you'll maintain more like but there's nothing that's specifically gonna just make your hair grow. Um, a healthier diet is gonna help make your hair stronger um, and look healthier and be healthier. But there's no there's no magic bullet that's just gonna make your hair grow. A healthy diet, a healthy regimen. So if you flat iron your hair every other day, get out of here. It's, it's not happening. Like that's ridiculous. Some people do it, and that's fine. That's how they style their hair. But you can't expect to have healthy hair that grows right. and maintains, or rather maintains the length or the height that you want if you right. do extreme heat styling method, um, regimens like flat ironing or pressing your hair. So it's in the regimen. It's in your diet. And also, I think the health of the products that you use. I think using um, products that are made with natural ingredients is the best way to go, just like having a healthy yeah. diet. So if you eat lots of junk food, you'll be overweight, your skin will be terrible, and you'll have other issues. And I think sim similarly, you should um, think of the products that you use in your hair as the diet, your hair diet. And so if you use products that have healthy natural ingredients, then you'll get the inherent nutrients that are in the ingredients um, in your hair. Because what you put on your hair and your scalp goes into your body, goes through your bloodstream, and all that affects you in some way. So it's your regimen. It's your diet and it's your hair diet, the products that you use. Okay, okay. good, thank you. You're welcome. That was a pretty comprehensive answer. I would also add that um, low manipulation styles are the best way to, if you just let your hair do what it wants to do, it, it do. will grow. So in my 25 years, I've found that my hair has grown um, the longest, like totally reached waist length when I was just wearing it in two strand twists in college, like mm -hmm. literally twisting my hair, taking it out every three or four weeks to sort of wash it and retwist it. Um, and just sort of not doing a lot of heavy styling, not flat ironing, you know, not doing a whole bunch of different intricate do's and updos. Like just as a general rule, the less you do to it, the better your hair will be. Okay. Yeah, I think the only thing I could possibly add to that is we kind of, we sometimes may need to challenge our attachment to the idea of length. Um, a lot of us come from a genetic background that is just not going to ever allow our hair to hit our ankles. Not going to happen. Yeah. You, you can stand on your head from here until Jesus comes back, and it's just not going to happen for you, baby. But that's okay, yeah. Yeah. right? And I think that. Sometimes when we desire something that we know we're not going to get so much, we miss out on all the beauty and the excitement of enjoying your hair in each phase. And I think no matter what length your hair is at, it's really important to enjoy your present state, right? Enjoy where you're at right now, uh, because that's where you are, right? <laughs> There's nothing you can do about other than be in that space. And so sometimes we sometimes long for something so much that we forget to appreciate the beauty that we have in this moment. And I'm sure you are a fabulously gorgeous sister, uh, rocking your natural and doing your thing. So do that at whatever length you have right now. Okay, okay. thank you. Great point. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you for calling. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. 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 These were great questions. These, These were great questions. questions, yes. We could be here all night. We, just, <laughs> we have gone over. So that was the last part. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Double for real, for real this time. Yeah. Okay, Bye. so uh, <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in and calling in and tweeting in. We appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you next time. Oh, and Monday, that'll be me and somebody, I'll let you know who that is. <laughs> so same time, same place, from 7 to 7.30, um, Karen's Desk Talk Show. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.